go ahead and get started. Uh, here we have Javier Ochoa, and he'll be talking about the Latin American Open Textbooks Initiative. So, let's get started. Thank you very much. Uh, by Javier Ochoa. I represent a very large network of researchers in Latin America that works in learning technologies. One of the projects of this network is the Latin, uh, the Latin American Initiative for Open Textbooks. Uh, you can download already the presentation from this website. <laughs> okay, to all the conference I have been hearing, textbooks are expensive. Yeah. If they are expensive for you, imagine Latin America. Mm -hmm. yeah? There is a study done in Brazil uh, that shows this uh, is the different programs in the University of Sao Paulo. This is roughly the amount of money that the people have to spend in textbooks if they buy all the textbooks that are recommended for their, for their courses. And that is the percentage of the annual minimum wage salary. So, if I want to buy the books, I have to spend 60 or 50 percent of what I earn the whole year. So, it's, it's not even feasible for uh, people with a minimum wage to have access to the textbooks. But we already have a solution, so it's no problem for us. <laughs> we have been studying for a long time. And what is this solution? <laughs> yeah. We have been photocopying books since a long time. Right? When I was a student, it was normal to photocopy the books. We don't have the same respect for copyright uh, law as you have in, in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, for example, there's an anecdote in, in Ecuador. Uh, we don't have blockbuster in Ecuador. We have very nice video shops. You can go there and find any movie that you want. All of them are copies. Yeah, no originals at all. They are just copies. But you know, it's good. Because before, we only had Hollywood movies. Because if you want to sell, you want to have a business with movies, what you have to do is buy the movies that will sell. Yeah, because they are expensive and you need to recover your costs. So you only get the ones that are blockbusters. But now, you can go to work any of these video uh, places and you find very nice collection of Korean movies, European cinema, even very strange and um, very difficult to find movies, you find there. Why? Because it's cheap to copy. Yeah? You can copy and if this not sell, if, if that copy does not sell, or sell one or two copies, it doesn't matter. Yeah? So, well, we don't have that respect for uh, law. So, now you want to want a legal, legal solution. Okay, uh, that's, that would be more difficult. Just some weeks ago, uh, there was a big issue in, in Uruguay, Montevideo. Uh, there was the police uh, seizing photocopies uh, uh, in the law, de law department of the main university in, in, um, in Montevideo. Why? Because they have been just copying the law books. So the lawyers are trying to avoid that there is more lawyers. Uh, and this is a new phenomenon in Latin America. Now copyright law is starting to give uh, been uh, more important for the government because of these trade agreements. The people really don't care, but uh, this is what happens. If you want to, if you read the Spanish, if you want to know all about it, just search, uh, search for that uh, hashtag in Twitter. But really the problem, of course, is not the real problem of textbooks in Latin America. As I said before, we have copies, we can get the book. Yeah, we have access to the books. We have a bigger problem. We make a study around 3,000 students from all Latin America, from Mexico to Argentina. And we found that only 50% of them use textbooks. Free textbooks, yeah? The photocopies, the libraries, whatever. It's not a book that they have to buy at $100. It's the book that they can get from cents per page. And you know why? It's because the textbooks are not relevant for them. Why? They are created in another context, yeah? Normally, professors say, okay, you can follow this book in my class, but the professor does not follow the book because it's not what they, he wants to teach. It's something different. It was created maybe uh, for the United States, maybe for Europe, but there are no books created for, uh, from Latin American teachers. It's a different context. Something as simple as if you say Capital America, uh, what it means for you and what it means for us? For us, it's a completely different image when we think about America what you get from America. So even this small difference make a lot when you 
talk about education. Context is very important for education. So, the main problem that we want to solve with this project is not the cost of the textbooks. It's this. We don't have local authors. There is very little diversity in the books that we have. Yeah? We only get... Imagine you have the books that the professors here in the United States produce or here in North America produce. Imagine how much of them are translated to Spanish. Very few of them. So it's not that you really have a lot to choose from. You just want some authors. Content is not relevant for us. Most of it sometimes is, 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 is uh, very funny. I was taught in, in Argentina, normally when you say this is the textbook of your class, you don't, you don't give just one textbook. It's not well seen if you just give one textbook. You need to give at least three textbooks. Yeah? Because it's, no textbook really fit what you teach at class. And for me, the worst of all these problems is that we have this mentality of consumers. Knowledge come to us. We don't produce knowledge. Yeah. And this is very, uh, very bad for our society. These are all consequences of the model that we currently have for publishing. Yeah. If you want to publish, yeah, I, I say with the movies. Why we have a lot of movies in Ecuador? Because it's cheap to have a, a movie, a copy of a movie. But if we only have the blockbusters, the, the, the Hollywood movies, uh, imagine that a professor in Ecuador wants to publish a book. Maybe he has the knowledge, he is able to write everything. He wants to go to Mark Rock Hill and say, I want to sell my book. They will just laugh and say, OK, thank you very much. Uh, next professor, please. Uh, and the issue is we are not used to produce books. That is where our project comes in. This Latin project is, uh, is in partnership with several universities in Latin America, say from Mexico to Argentina. Uh, we have partners in all of those countries. Um, also, we have some support from European uh, partners. The idea of this is make our professor write the books. But there is an issue here. Our professors are not used to writing the books. Yeah. Not because they are not capable of doing it, because they are not used to it. And they are, normally what they produce is lecture notes, small pieces of content. So how to translate from that, or, or, trans, or transit from that to a full book? Collaborative writing. So now, instead of having the problem of one professor writing a book, we have the problem of a bunch of professors discussing how to write a book. That's a very nice problem there, right there. How do we put a lot of professors in, in a room or in a digital room to discuss about what they have to write. We actually try to solve this issue. We go to the literature and say, okay, how do you manage to write something with a bunch of people? So we go into the collaboration <coughs> methodologies. And we found out that it's not as easy as it sounds. How do you write something together with a group of people? Depends a lot on the group. There are a lot of strategies to go. For example, is each one writes a chapter, or we write everything together. Who has the control of the changes? Everything has the same uh, level of responsibility. Uh, how do you go into the actual writing? We do it sequentially. You do it uh, incrementally. Yeah. So we try to come up with a methodology. We have some publication about that. Yeah. And we devise this kind of digital ecosystem for the collaborative textbook production. We call it like that, but it's just the way that connections work. Yeah, I just call it a different way, publish in the paper. But really, we see, okay, this is, seems to be working for connections, but we see that there are some parts that are missing in the connection framework. We add those pieces to adapt to a, a, again to the Latin American context to create this ecosystem where this group of professors produce books the results of these books are pieces of content that could be reused in other books. Yeah? These books, again, produce more content that it could be, uh, again, consumed by other professors. So we really create an ecosystem where one species uh, give, uh, basically, energy to other species that, again, complete a cycle. Yeah? And the important organism in this ecosystem is the author community. So you need to have a bunch of professors not discussing about what should be in a book. That's one of the points that we make clear. Just discussing about the subject. Each one will create their own book. 
They don't have to come to, to agree on which chapter, which is the sequence of chapters. They just produce material. And each one of them take from this material and create their own sequence, their own content, uh, according to their own context. Even if you see Latin America, you, you can see it's uh, just one big region, where Mexicans are very diff different from Argentinian people. Yeah, they are totally different. And so even the language is kind of different. But we, we don't need only a community. We need an open community. And we uh, study uh, connections. This is a graph of connections. You see the blue uh, circles are all contributors to connections. Uh, the title of the, of the circle is how many objects they have created in connections. The red ones are the ones that are new to the community. I don't know if you can see, but there is a lot of red dots connected to blue dots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's small, big, but they are connected. They are not a, a, a group of blue and a group of red. That means that the, con the connections have a very open community. If somebody new arrives, it's immedi immediately assembled into the groups. So it's not like, okay, we are the club here, and you can talk, uh, we talk about us, and we create our content, and you do your, your stuff. It's very open. We want to have a community like this. And for that, we need a sharing community. So it's everything used uh, Creative Commons. But we found out that not all Creative Commons uh, is useful for this community. There are some licenses that we could use, some licenses that we could not. And what happened is, if we create this ecosystem with a grown license, this ecosystem cannot exist. If we, for example, say uh, we will have something like uh, non-commercial, yeah, it seems that okay. So I don't anybody to profit from my from my from my work. But what happens if I want to sell a printed copy of the book at cost? Maybe I'm not making money, but that's legal or not. So it's a very this way. So we actually uh, use uh, reference and share like a license for this project. So apart from coming back with this methodology, some recommendation on how to create the books, we also try to create a technological platform. Why? Well, there's a lot of C uh, computer science people in the project, so they need something to do. And we found out that current tools do not up, are up to the task. Okay, you see, there is connections, okay? Maybe they could implement a very new interface, very nice interface for editing. But there are two places that are missing. One is the social aspect. We need communities. If you go to connections, yeah, you can create a community of connections, but it's not, it not helping to do it. Yeah? You, if it, there was a study made by Petrides uh, some time ago that found out that the communities are actual geographical communities. They are, they, create a community because they meet each other and they discuss the things, but they are not communicating in the platform. So what we need is first to have a social network of some type that brings people together. If uh, I want to write a book about mathematics, maybe there's other professors that want also uh, write a book about mathematics. So we need to meet, we need to discuss, we need to create really a community. It's not just that putting people together and they would write a book. You need trust, you need some kind of common interest. So that's the first part that we built. And we need to connect that with a writing platform, a collaborative writing platform. For this, uh, there are some alternatives, book type. Uh, we have made some improvements to this uh, system. The idea is to connect to repositories of context. We connect with connections. So everything that is created in connections will be reduced into this system. And other thing that most of these systems also are missing is the publishing part. Okay, if you go to connections, yeah, you have you enter a repository where you have to look for content, you maybe find the content, maybe you don't find the content. It's not a library. If you go to iTunes and you see the books, they recommend you books, know what you like, and recommend you what you need. We need to have a bookstore. Yeah? We need to connect that bookstore to the writing. So all of this needs to be one coherent platform. And we need to collect statistics around all the process. So we can improve how they, um, how the professors work, how the book is distributed, how it's used by the students. There's a lot of platforms that we can use. We didn't build much code for this. Yeah. So here, for example, we have already now, right now something like 200 communities around uh, different topics with different amount of members in each community. 
Uh, this is book title, our adaption of the book title, where you can create actual, the, the actual uh, profile of the book. Here is the editor that is very similar to Google Docs. Uh, very, uh, uh, several people could write at the same time, and you can see what they are writing. They, you can introduce multimedia, you can actually create a very nice HTML5 book. And at the end, you just can see. We still not, are not, uh, have not ready the um, bookstore. Apart from all this, to having the, uh, the, the collaboration methodology, the platform, we need strategies for adoption. How we make this useful? OK, we need to prove that these books are useful. If you want to go into university and say, we need to use it, we need to do some pilot experiments with professors where they write, and with a student using the books. <laughs> yeah? At the beginning, we were uh, trying to figure out how we can create these pilots. Uh, we just put a bunch of professors together and expect a book out, uh, out of it. So we see, OK, maybe there are some professors already interested in writing a book. So we launch a contest. And we have a response that, well, we said uh, we expected. We didn't expect. I was suffering till the last moment that we got all the all the all the results uh, together because uh, I was not sure that we would have enough proposals. But we found out that there was 90 communities uh, that uh, that created 47 proposals. We were only able to accept 25 of them, not because the other was not not good enough, because we don't have the money in the project to, to fund them all. And now we currently have. We have uh, 144 professors writing books. At this moment, they are creating these books that we, we, you were seeing. <laughs> the books should be ready by January 2014. These are books will be in Spanish and Portuguese, and we need. To, uh, we will pilot in doing the rest of uh, 2014. So we have some idea of if these books are good enough to replace uh, <laughs> traditional textbooks. Uh, for these, we need a lot of surveys. So this piloting uh, needs a lot of uh, looking at details, how the groups group, uh, work together. For example, we have seen some groups that are already finishing the book, other groups that are just starting to make uh, some decisions about the content. So we need uh, to measure a lot to see if these pilots are working. To give sustainability to the project, we have uh, well, we're in the plans of creating this editorial alerta, that means open publishing. An open publisher that will be a non-profit company that uh, will take the results, these books, and try to distribute them, like any editorial, uh, any publishing company. So we want not just to have the books from uh, the Latin or they are produced in our platform, but we also are scouting for books that are created. That's why I'm here too. I was very interested in knowing the other uh, open textbook initiatives and getting links so I can grab those books, translate them, so I can have some contacts already for to translate some books that you already have in English uh, to translate them in Spanish. And this editorial or this publisher will be the one that uh, will have this bookstore and will try to distribute these books to professors in Latin America in the same way that normal publisher companies do. What for finishing my my talk? I want to to mention that for us, open. Open textbooks, of collaborative open textbooks, it's not about the cost of the book. It's not about the free part of the open. Yeah? We have already free, not legal, but free. Yeah? So it's not important. We, if I go to my, my rector in my university and say, I have a project to make textbooks free for students, he will say, OK. They already get the books, so that, that doesn't matter. But for us, open is a way to change the publishing model that is making a lot of harm to Latin American professors, to Latin American universities. If we do, we do not produce our own content, we just get into this cycle of, OK, everything just come to us. We don't give anything back to the international community. So we need to get these professors publishing. We need to get these professors sharing material. We need these professors talking to each other. There's a lot of other opportunities there, the moment that we have professors from different countries talking together, maybe we can start talking about harmonization of curriculum. Maybe we can start talking about the interchange of students. Maybe we can talk about a regional educational system. 
So for us, open is more than just free. It's a tool that helps us not just change, but really improve uh, how education is goes in Latin America. OK, with that, I finished my talk. Uh, you can visit the project. If you have more information, there is in English, uh, latinproject.org. Or if you want to try the tools, uh, they're in Spanish. Well, some of them are also in English. Comunidad and Escritura Proyecto Latin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for questions. You have five minutes for questions. Yeah, we just organized a, a call for 
for grants, we give uh, we give some money back to the professor because the books are free, but creating the books is not a free uh, enterprise. So we just create these grants, uh, they apply, and we have some requirements that they have to fulfill, and yeah, we have a lot of proposals with a lot of universities from the region. Okay, I think my time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you.